and what God's people mean. This building is not the church. They can destroy this building. The church will live on. And thank God. Lady, it's so good to have you all tonight coming in with us. Bless you. All right, I want you to see verse 6 tonight of our text in 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible says that thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ if you put the brethren in remembrance of some things. I will speak tonight on the subject, a good minister of Jesus Christ. The word minister can be used synonymously with servant. Amen. Servant. Uh, he's not going to say, well done, thou good and faithful pastor. He's not going to say, well done, thou good and faithful deacon. He's not going to say, well done, thou good and faithful evangelist or missionary. One day in heaven, he's just going to make a general statement. He's going to say, if you had a, a servant like spirit, he's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen? So everybody qualifies. Everybody qualifies if you're serving Christ. Uh, he, that's great, he that is great among you, what does the scripture say? We're in Bible study tonight. Let him be your what? Let him be your servant, your minister. Jesus Christ did not come to be ministered to. Amen. He came to minister. He came to serve. If you're in a uh, leadership role in this church, you're here not for the position. You're, you're here not for the title. You're not here to be seen or heard of man. You're here to serve. Amen. Again, let me say it again. Let him that is great among you be your servant, which means uh, we're here to serve the community. We're here to get people saved. We talked to some people tonight, uh, some children all gathered around us here, and, and uh, you know what? They didn't have a clear picture. They didn't have a clear presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and the resurrection. Now, you thought everybody knew, didn't you? Go out on the street where the people live and you'll see they're hungry. They're hungry for the gospel. Then we talked to one of the ladies who was the mother of these one of the ch uh, children that we won to Christ and she had not been saved, but she said, preachers get so mean out here on the street. She said, we don't know what will happen next. There's so much meanness going on in this city and we can say amen to that. I've preached enough funerals here recently. I don't want any more. And we preached one a funeral of a man who was gunned down in the streets of New Orleans. Never will forget it. The longest day I live. Had two men with me as bodyguards, and they had their hand uh, on the gun. The whole time the funeral was going on, it was outside. They had their hand on that gun because they, we didn't know. We had no idea uh, how these people were connected or not connected, or they wanted to be disconnected. We don't know. So preacher had some help. Is that okay with everybody? Preacher had some help. I'll tell you where our greatest help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord. Our help comes from the Lord. By the way, if you want a promotion, promotion cometh from the north. I'm about to go north. And this time next week, y'all pray for me. Uh, God willing, uh, we'll be preaching in the state of Indiana. Brother Chris will be preaching in my place. By the way, uh, he did a great job today. Five children in our school in the chapel were saved today. Amen. They were saved today. Then we had seven uh, tonight out on visitation, and the people are hungry. The people are tired of being inside. They're getting cabin fever. They appreciate the visit. Believe me, we did not have one person say, uh, why did you come to our door? They were happy to see us. They're receptive, and more than I've seen it in a long time. People are very, very receptive. And so how do we become a good minister? of Jesus Christ. That's the message tonight. You don't have to be a full-time servant of the Lord to be a minister uh, unto Jesus Christ. And so tonight, we want you to find this servant spirit. We want you to understand that it's so vital because in the Bible says in the very first verse that the Spirit expressly speaks to us that in the latter days that men shall depart from the faith, giving heed to to these seducing spirits, plural. There's many voices that's gone out in the world. And doctrines of devils, plural. Amen. 
There's one devil and many demons. And that's what it's talking about here. And we understand that there's a whole lot of superstition. There's a whole lot of, uh, you know, fables. There's a lot of uh, tradition. There's a lot of things that are going around and being taught that's not necessarily thus saith the Lord. Very seldom anymore does anyone ask me when they want to join our church a doctrinal statement. They don't ask for that anymore because, quite frankly, they don't know what they believe, so why should it matter what we believe? That's how bad it is uh, in America. And so uh, it's very important. If you go to a church that says that doctrine is not important, you better put your Nike shoes on and run. If they say doctrine is not important. I mentioned three times uh, in the text tonight. If doctrine is not important, then why is it in the Bible? Doctrine is very important. It basically means that you need to be indoctrinated. You need to be rooted and grounded in the truth of the word of God. Amen. How do I become a good minister of Jesus Christ? A good minister of Jesus Christ is not just going to allow you to be swayed by every wind of doctrine coming along. Some say that there is a rapture. Some say there's not a rapture. But what does God say about it? It's whatever God says about it that we should go with. It's not about what your opinion is. We all have them. We have to go by thus saith the Lord. I was preaching along these lines once at a, uh, at a funeral. And the preacher, uh, the man was uh, uh, there, uh, was a preacher man in the, in the audience. And he said, oh, you're one of those Bible-believing preachers. And I said, what other kind is there? What do you preach out of? I said. <laughs> then one lady came up to me and she said, oh, my goodness, you'll be a good preacher when you get the Holy Ghost. I said, sister, just pray for me. Preached about an hour. How much more Holy Ghost can you get than that? Good night in the morning. Some say, hey, when you get the full gospel, you'll really be good. <laughs> well, the full gospel is the death, burial, and the resurrection. To add anything to the death, burial, and the resurrection is to add works to salvation. You know that now, right? I want to indoctrinate you. I don't want you to be swayed with every wind of doctrine coming along. I know our teens are over there, and I know our children are over here, but we are just adults in here tonight. Uh, is it all right if we just preach to the adults? Amen. First thing I want to see is the word of God. It nourishes us. Look at verse number six again. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be called and be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Notice what it does when we teach these things out of the word of God. It says it nourishes us up in the word of faith uh, and of good doctrine wherein to thou has attained. You see the word doctrine again in verse 13. You see the word doctrine again in verse number 16. So uh, it completes us. It matures us. It makes us, if you will, uh, whole. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, in all areas of life. This is the word of life that gives life to us. It nourishes us. And I'm a good preacher. I'm a good minister of Jesus Christ when I tell you, thus saith the Lord. I don't believe we had preaching on Wednesday night. God didn't call me to give devotions. He called me to preach. I'm a God-called preacher. And I preach. Amen. I don't apologize for preaching. Amen. What this world needs, I don't think there's any ill our country would have or ever have that real old-fashioned preaching wouldn't cure. Turn, if you will, to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 2. The Bible says, hey, give me your chapter and verse when you have an opinion, please. I don't want your opinion without a chapter or a verse. Smart Alex will give you an opinion. I don't care for smart alleys. I want to hear what God says. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 2 says, Preach the word. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. See that doctrine? Folks, we've got to have the doctrine. 
It's time for America to get back to the basics, get back to the Bible, get back to church, get back to Bible reading, get back to the word of God, get back to revival. We need revival on Wednesday night. We need the full choir on Wednesday night. We need the Lord. He said, I want to put you in remembrance of these things. They're, these are things that all of us know if we've read the Bible. By the way, have you read your Bible today? <laughs> I promise you, you'll have a better day if it's the word of life. You'll have a better day if you've read your Bible today. You go around all day moping and groping and whining and griping and fussing and cussing and you had not read your Bible and you know you hadn't. You get in the Word of God and you let the Holy Spirit touch your life and touch your heart uh, and your heart's receptive for the implantation of God's Word. When you, read the, when you read the Word of God, the Word of God will never go contrary to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will never go contrary to the Word of God and thus you are safe if you read your Bible today. Amen. You can become a servant of the Lord if you'll just read your Bible. I'm convinced of that. Did you know I know some people that got saved just by reading the Bible? I asked that lady tonight. I said, lady, dear lady, I said, has anyone ever taken time with you to show you from the Bible how to be saved? From the Bible. I'm not talking about someone's experience now. I'm not talking about you just walking down the street and poof somebody, uh, you know, something fell on you. I'm not talking about that kind of salvation. I can't find that kind of salvation in the Bible. I'm talking about has someone opened the word, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't believe in this kind of salvation that nobody ever reads a Bible verse to you and shows you from the Bible how to be saved. She said, no, pastor. No one's ever taken the time. You know how long it took? About seven minutes. Seven's the perfect number. You know all you'd have to do? You don't even have to memorize the scripture. Just carry a few of these cards around. Brother James, you got some? I've got about a, I've got some. I'll share some with you if you want. How many is in a deck of cards? You've been playing those. Why don't you play with these? Amen. You didn't know I was going to get on your pet sin tonight, did you? The word of God nourishes us. You don't have to worry about playing blackjack down there or 21 down there if you're getting the word of God. I think that'll handle it. I thought, I thought everybody left. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. Help me out up here. I'm all alone. So what am I saying? I'm saying, hey, I believe the word of God is all we need. And guess what? These are Jesus' words. You need to do in the morning. You need to get up in the morning. You need to go, good morning, Jesus. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. In thee all the folly of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. My Jesus, I love thee. And I know tis now. Amen. So tonight, listen, I, I'm seeing tonight the word of God. There, people don't know enough of the word of God to, uh, to fill a thimble full. That's what we need. We think we need chemicals in our body to make it work. We think we need a, a gymnasium down there to make our body healthy. Uh, we think we need this. We think we need that. Listen, the diet food business tonight, tonight in America is a billion dollar industry. Of course, they're going to make you think that you need their product. Of course, the supplements and the chemicals and all of the things that they're uh, they're. Uh, advising you to get, but I'm saying, remember, it's a business, uh, and they're serious about it. Hey, man, uh, hey, hey, if you're serious about uh, uh, getting healthy, let me just throw something good in tonight because it's in the text. Did you read it? Every creature of God is good with the uh, uh, sanctification and prayer and the word of God. I read that. Did you hear that tonight? If you really want to get healthy, why don't you eat everything food-wise, the pomegranates, all of it? It's in the Word of God. I think God's food is more healthy than the food we get down at Winn-Dixie. It's full of chemicals. Why are so many people getting Alzheimer's? Why are so many people getting dementia? Where does that come from? 
I talked to our missionary over in India. I went over there and he said, Pastor, he said, what is Alzheimer's? He said, we don't have it in India. He said, they don't have it is because we eat two coconuts a day. Something else they eat, Miss Crane, what was it? Cauliflower. They eat two coconuts and a cauliflower. <laughs> every, believe me, he had a coconut every day, a new one sitting on my, on my table uh, that he had gotten harvested from a tree uh, that morning. And uh, just so wonderful uh, to listen uh, to the word of God. It says it nourishes us up in faith. Oh, listen. Uh, we need faith in these last days because it says that the Spirit expressly speaks to us in the latter days that people will depart uh, from the faith. The apostasy is here. The falling away is here. People have apostatized themselves. You know why? They're going on their own earthly wisdom and human reasoning and human opinions, but they're not going by thus saith the Lord. Scripture tonight uh, from this King James Bible. Could you do it other than John 3.16? I said, could you do it? We better nourish ourselves up in the Word of God. Hey, you're not going to always have a copy of the Word of God. So what are you going to do? You better have some in here and you better have it down hidden in your heart. So if we hide God's Word in our heart, we shall not sin against God. Is that what God's Word says? So, so we're nourished up uh, by the Word of God because, uh, listen, we need the Word of God to make us strong. Amen? I said we need the Word of God. We need to quit listening to the wrong spirit. The Bible says uh, in 1 John chapter 4, verse number 1, that there are many spirits that's gone out into the world. There's a departing from the faith. There are much, uh, the Bible says here, uh, seducing spirits and doctrines uh, of devils. I'd sure much more rather believe the doctrine of the Bible than the doctrine of devils. Think on that just a while. If there are many voices in the world, Satan wants you to listen to him. He wants to lead you astray. He wants to uh, whisper in your ear. He, he gets his old talons down in my shoulder meat right there, and he perches on my shoulder like he perches on your shoulder, and he tries to condemn you. What are you going to do? Romans 5, 1. There is, uh, excuse me, Romans chapter, someone, there's no, therefore no condemnation. Is it 10 and 1? 10 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the what? The spirit. Galatians, uh, you'll find it over there in chapter 5 and verse number 16 where it says, uh, what? You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. <laughs> You've got to have the Spirit of God upon you. I promise you this. If you're filled with the Spirit, emptied of flesh, I promise you, you won't be apostatizing yourself. I promise you, you won't be indoctrinated with doctrines of devils. I promise you that you won't be wishy-washy. Now's not a time to go wobbly in this late hour in which we're living. And notice verse number six again, the good doctrine. The Bible says the good doctrine. There's good doctrine. There's much superior doctrine. And then there's bad doctrine. Amen. Anytime doctrine is used uh, uh, to forbid uh, marriage. Look in verse number 3. There are people today who are teaching uh, not to marry. God says this is bad doctrine. I'm trying to get everybody in the church married. There's people that are trying to keep people from getting married. I don't understand it. They're forbidding to marry. Did you see that? That's defined in the scripture as devil's doctrine. Amen. And commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So here we have a young man who's half Jewish and half Gentile. Somebody tell me his name, please. What book are we in, folks? Help me. Are you there? Have you checked out? Are you trying to uh, do your, uh, you paying bills online tonight in church? Help me. What's the man's name we're, we're learning about tonight? He's a young preacher. Timothy. He's half Jew. He, <laughs> he's half Gentile. And God said, of course, uh, uh, there was a big uh, 
a contention among them because he hadn't been circumcised, and Paul had him circumcised. Uh, I'm talking about the Judaizers were after him, and, and they were trying their best to push this Judaism back down his throat. And God says, inspiredly written, uh, here in the word of God, that there's nothing that God has created. If it's received with thanksgiving, of them which believe and know the truth, it's good. It's good for the eating. Amen. Hey, do you pray over your meal? I'm not just talking about Thanksgiving. I'm talking about when you slip into Burger King. You know, you're in a hurry. You're going through the line. Uh, and maybe even, are they allowing in, in restaurant meals now? Are they allowing that? Okay, I went off in another city the other day, and we, my wife said, we was in Mobile. My wife said, honey, it's been a long time since we've been on a date. Hint, hint. I said, what you wanting, hon? She said, uh, uh, how about a steak and shake? They've got one over here. So we did. And we sit there an hour just talking, just talking, just talking. And you know how the restaurant, uh, the waitresses and the waiters do. They try to hurry you along by coming. Is there anything else? We're making room for somebody else. No, there's nothing else. We're just enjoying ourselves. We're, you know, we're drinking a shake. We're eating, a, uh, we eat one of these, what do they call them? Uh, steak, steak sandwiches and enjoying ourselves. I don't even know what, what I was talking about or where that led to, but boy, we had fun. You know, we prayed over our meal. We asked God to bless it. You, you don't know how that person prepared that meal. Huh. You don't know what they put in there. You better pray over it. <laughs> you better Hey, uh, all these things, all these creatures are good. Every creature of God, verse 4, is good for, and nothing to be refused if received with thanksgiving. Go to a foreign country, and there's food that you're not used to eating, but yet you're being served this in their homes. Uh, and it would be an offense to them if you did not eat it. I remember the first meal we had in Romania. The night we got in, it must have been 11 o'clock, and the man, he, he spent a long time back there preparing. It must have been after midnight before we ate, and he brought out... Uh, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> Y'all ever been to this, uh, this, what do they call this steakhouse, uh, the Outback Steakhouse, where they b bring out this blooming onion as big, as big as the plate? Well, this one hadn't been fried. It was just an onion, and it was big as the plate. <laughs> and he said, uh, Bon appetite <laughs> and uh, puff de buna and all these words in Romanian and European languages and such. And I said, this is it, guys. This is what we're getting for supper tonight. And, <laughs> and it was hot. It was one of those hot onions. I kid you not. I got it down. And every time Miss Crane, bless her heart, I'm picking on her tonight. Every time she didn't like uh, something, she would shove it over there to me. And, uh, you know, I'd have to get it down somehow. But uh, praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. Just think if that's all you had to eat is an onion. You know, when they saw, when they knew that we were coming, and there was no, there was no hotels to stay in back in the early days. We stayed in the homes of the people. And they would save up for months to buy the meat necessary because they didn't eat meat but once a week. And to have, you know, to be good and hospitable, uh, for these people coming in from foreign countries to stay in their home, then we always left them money, of course, because we wanted to bless them. But can you imagine? Uh, you know, we've been blessed in our country. I said we've been blessed beyond measure. And uh, look, folks, we need we need to be thankful. It says with Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's just around the corner, but let's not let it be said of us that the Thanksgiving season is the only season that we give thanks. Let us be thankful in everything. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I've read that somewhere, amen? So much superior to bad doctrine is good doctrine. And mark this doctrine as one uh, of the doctrines of the devils if it uh, is forbidding someone to get married. Young people today are not wanting to get married. They just want to play the fool. They just want to shack up. They just want to live in sin. But may I say to you, it's still sin. We need to encourage our young people to do things God's way. 
I mean, really need to lay it out for them because I don't think they understand. They need to get married, they need to have children, and they need to raise these children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We need to indoctrinate these young people. You understand where I'm going with this? Why? Because they're getting uh, impure doctrine off the street. They're, they're getting uh, doctrine... Uh, of devils off of the street, and everything goes out there. I remember when me and Miss Crane, if someone was living together, even back in 83 when we got married, that was taboo. Heathen people didn't do that. Now Christian people are doing that. Say, so, preacher, why are you driving that point down? I'm, I'm driving that point down because the Bible says that in the latter days, the Spirit exp ex uh, speaketh expressly that in the latter days, uh, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. And one of these seducing spirits says, not to get married. Multiple relationships. Carrying baggage when you finally do get married. Carrying all that baggage into the marriage bed. And you're carrying all those weights and encumbrances. You're carrying all those things. That's the sins of the past. And it's, it's horrifying. We have to counsel with people. And, and it's, it's just terrible what people uh, put themselves through. And they don't have to do all that. We need to teach them. We need to indoctrinate them. Not long ago, uh, someone was wanting to get married and they didn't show. Can you believe that? I was going to marry them. And uh, they, just, they did not show. They, they chickened out. And uh, I, I, that should, I just wanted to say that because, uh, you know, uh, we've had too many no-shows. We've had too many, uh, you know, wannabe Christians. Uh, we've had too many people get up to the line and see what it's going to be expected of them to be a Christian, to be a Christ-like person, and they just back away because they say, you know, what's the use? I can't live it. Well, the truth is they're partially correct on that. They can't do it in the arm of the flesh. It will fail them every time. But you have to have the Spirit of the Lord. So... You understand that uh, we, need to, we need to teach. We, we need to teach pure, not impure doctrine. We need to uh, teach these things. Why? They're not being taught in the public school. No. Uh, they're not being taught even in the homes today. We have a Christian school, and we have to teach them the things that the parents will not teach the children. And thank God five of them got saved today. Praise God. And so much of our suffering in our country tonight is because, uh, you know, uh, it's because we are, we're just adrift spiritually. We, we have drifted from the moorings. Uh, our, our, our forefathers that, that laid down the groundwork and the foundation, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 it's, it's just non-existent anymore. And so the thought is tonight, listen, God wants us to, he wants us to do, be thankful in everything. Now let's notice a bodily exercise. We're all interested in that, aren't we? <laughs> Look at verse number 8. Now it doesn't say bodily exercise is not profitable. It says that it profiteth little compared to what? Keep reading. But godliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So the thought is, uh, you know, spiritual is much more valuable than the physical. You can get this physical body as in shape as you want it to be, but if you've gained the whole world and lost your soul, what have you profited? What have you profited if you showed every man at the gymnasium every ripple of your body, women, and your soul is as dirty as it's always been. It's corrupt. I don't think that's very wise at all. Matter of fact, I don't want to go to the gym, and my wife won't let me go to the gym and be tempted by these man-stealers. Hello. Hey, man, somebody help me up here. Praise the Lord. See, I don't like that kind of preaching, neither does the devil. That's why he don't join this Baptist church, amen? But look, the same people... That, look, they, they don't have a problem, you know, uh, going through some of these motions that the world wants them to go through, but yet, hey, you know what, they, they, they'll get in shape, they'll ride, uh, they'll do this, they'll do that, they'll run, uh, they'll lift weights, they'll get in shape, they're all buff. 10 o'clock Sunday morning at Sunday school time, you won't find them. They don't want to get spiritually in shape. They, they, the Bible says here, 
Bodily exercise profiteth. It does profit, but it profits little in comparison to godliness. A spiritual man is going to want to be at church. Why? Because he knows and understands this is where he's getting in shape spiritually. Amen. Hey, I'm thanking God tonight. My grandmother never ran a 5K or a 10K. Amen. But she's as skinny as a bean pole. She looked like Dorothy down here. But you know what? See, how does she keep the weight off, preacher? She was lugging around four children. That'll keep it off of you, ladies. Amen? Praise the Lord. And I'm thinking, good night in the morning. I, I happened to make a mistake one day. I said, Grandma, I said, uh, I'm tired. I must have been all of about 16 years old, 15 years old, something like that. I'm so tired. And uh, my grandmother looked at me with those big brown eyes of hers, and she said, Son, don't you ever let me hear you say that again. You don't know what tired is. I can still hear her saying it. She said, you've never been to the cotton field in the morning. you never worked out there all day. Oh, God help us tonight. Oh, thank God. Amen. Thank, thank God for you, Sister Dorothy. You know, the, the workout, we're, wake, we're using all of our energy at the gym working out. Hey, there's some fence rows that need to be cleaned out. Amen. There's some weeds that need to be pulled. There's some trash that needs to be picked up. Aren't you tired of the trash in Gulfport? Why don't they clean it up a little? Why don't they pick one of people? Why don't people throw? I was, I was at some place the other day, and they threw a whole bag of trash right out in the, in the medium. And I ran out there and picked it up. I said, somebody threw this down, sir. It wasn't me. I'm picking it up. They looked at me like I was funny for picking up the trash. God help us. Number four, and lastly, amen. This is it. Hey, look at verse number 13. This is another verse that it says doctrine in it. He said, till I come, give attention, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine, and neglect not the gift that is in thee. Now, the gift is the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. He's the free gift of salvation. He's what gives us new life. He, he, he births us again into the family of God. And so the Spirit of God gives us understanding when we are reading, when we are being preached to, this is exhortation, and even when we're having a doctrinal lesson like tonight. I wonder how many Baptist churches you can go in on a Wednesday night and they're having a doctrinal lesson like we are here, just verse by verse, precept upon precept, line upon line. This is what helps people grow. Very few people, amen, believe what we believe uh, when, they, when they join, they don't ask uh, what we believe. They don't, they, they don't think doctrine matters. Uh, and uh, some say that uh, they're not part of any denomination. They're in a non-doctrinal uh, church. Uh, but can I just clue you in? Usually those churches are a part of a denomination or even an associational Baptist church, but they've taken the name Baptist off because they say that it's too offensive. Oh, my goodness. We sure don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. When 250 million of us Baptists have died for the faith, friend, I'm not taking the sign off. I don't care who it offends. Read the Trail of Blood. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs, and you'll see the history of the Baptist church. I'm Baptist from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. It's not what makes me a Christian, but I've been indoctrinated. Hey, the indoctrination that I received is better than indoctrination that the devil wanted for me out on the streets. He'd have much rather me singing that, uh, that uh, pop band that I was practicing with when the Lord got a hold of my life. He'd have much rather me being siphoned off from the church like so many others in the last days. There's going to be a falling away and men will apostatize themselves and get out of sweet fellowship of those believers. The Bible says you know you pass from death into life because you love the brethren. The Bible says you know that you're one of my children, you're, you're one, of my chi one of my child. If, uh, if by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one towards another. Where does the brethren hang out? They hang out down at the church house. He said to forsake not the assembling of yourself together as a man of some. The church is the assembly. 
Church is the assembly of baptized believers. What are we doing here? We're, we're being instructed. We're being exhorted. We're being encouraged. We're, we're being indoctrinated. And we're meditating on the word of God day and night. And we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. What do you think? Amen. So the exhortation is what Paul wanted Timothy to do. He wanted to encourage him to go to these people and to preach the word of God uh, to them. I hope that happens with these young preachers in our church. I pray that as I've been faithful to them, one day they'll have a congregation to be faithful towards. Uh, they'll be a good minister uh, of Jesus Christ. That, that they'll have their little flock that they can that, that they can teach and that they can preach to and that they can nurture uh, with this holy nourishment from the Word of God. And uh, you know, this is what saves a country. When our country was great, we had great churches that was preaching and teaching the Word of God. And we had churches that were planting baby churches all over the place. And look at verse 16. Take heed unto yourself. Uh, listen, it says, uh, uh, listen to your own preaching, young Timothy, and unto the doctrine and continue in them. Notice, for in so doing, this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Save thyself from what? This untoward generation. This generation that don't believe anything. This generation that don't want to believe the doctrine of the Bible. This generation that just wants a tingle when they come to church. This generation, all they want to do is sway and dance. We had one lady, she came to church, and this is what she said. I'm not kidding, it's the exact word she said. She said, when I come to church, I want to dance with Jesus, and I want to feel intimate with God. She couldn't have hurt me worse than if she had poured hot scalding water on me. My wife just easily let her down by saying, well, I guess you won't fit in here because we don't do any dancing to Jesus here. Because the Bible says, and my wife gave her this verse, let everything be done decently and in order. And I don't want to see any person, male or female, shaking everything God gave them, especially in the church of the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. If I'm going to go to a discotheque, I'll do it, but I'm not going to go to the church of Jesus and do it. Amen. I'll be backslidden, but I won't be going to the church to do it. That's a double backslide. Amen. That's worse than that. We're to save ourselves from this untoward generation. We have a whole generation of people who don't know what a New Testament church is, and they wouldn't know it if they met it in the middle of the road. No doctrine. No power. They don't have enough power to blow the fuzz off a peach. They don't have enough power to go out in Jesus' name. Seven saved a night out there talking. And one lady said, Pastor, my son Raymond has come to your church off and on all of his life on one of y'all's buses. He's 18 years of age now, and he needs your church now more than ever. He, she said, come get him on Sunday. My wife's typing the address and the names and the numbers and all that in her phone. We're out there uh, tonight before church. I want to be a good minister, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want church to be good Christians. If pastor and his wife can do that, you can too. Nothing special about us. Nothing special about that. God just placed us right where we needed to be. Wasn't nothing hard about it. It was just like pulling off ripe fruit off the vine. There's somebody, there's a co-worker tomorrow at the lunch time that you could do that with. Hey, I got some if you need them. I said, preacher, what's wrong with you? I've been back to the prayer room. God told me to get the word out. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed. Hey, that ain't going to win a soul in my pocket. I, dare, I double dog dare some of you to come up here and get some of them, take them and 
pass them out. Dorothy would. She said, I started one time preacher going to another church, she said, but I just didn't like it. I didn't fit in. I can tell you what it was. It was cold and dead at 3 o'clock in the morning. and wasn't nobody getting saved. If there ever comes a day when nobody's getting saved in this church, we're going to fast for a few days. Amen? We're going to pray about it. Let's bow our heads for prayer, shall we?